Major funding for these programs has been provided by grants from Chase Commercial Term Lending and m and Bank, Geneva Burns, Jean Tomasi and Webster, Capital One Bank, the Wickoff Group, New York Community Bank, Greenberg Trorug, Perfect Building Maintenance, Kilroy Architectural Windows, New York's Window Company. Additional funding is provided by grants from Aerial Property Advisors, AKA Hotels, Corman Communities, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Bank Leumi USA, Briarwood Organization, CVRE, Colliers International NYC, Cushman and Wakefield, Customers Bank, CUNY TV Foundation, DDG, Dime Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Douglaston Development, Levine Builders, First Nationwide Title Insurance Agency, Flushing Bank, Friedman, Gemini Real Estate Advisors, Herrick Feinstein, Versha Hospitality Trust, Investors Bank, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, James Orfanides, Chairman, USRealty.com, John Katsimides, Red Apple Group, Margolin Weiner and Evans, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Meridian Capital Group, New Banks, Newmark Grub Knight Frank, People's United Bank, RBS Citizens Bank, SJP Properties, Sterling & Sterling, Stonehenge Partners, TD Bank, Terra CRG, The Continuum Company, Urban American, and these friends. I want to be a producer. Everybody wants to be a producer. Everybody wants to be on Broadway. Everybody from around the world comes to Broadway. But I know nothing about Broadway, so I brought together four people who know everything about Broadway. My guests today are the esteemed you know, executive vice president of the Jujamson Theaters, Paul Levin. Thank you. Okay. The executive vice president of the Nederlander organization, Nick Scandalius, the <laughs> president of the Schubert organization, Robert Wankel. And then, what, I got a producer, I got the theater league, I got Tom Vertel of Scorpio Entertainment. So, how is Broadway doing this year? It's Fabulous. doing great. Better? I mean, no more recession, everything is wonderful? We didn't experience the recession. You, are you really telling me that you didn't feel the recession? No, there was a little blip, but people keep coming. They keep coming from all over the world. How many years are you in the theater business? Uh, I'm working on 57. Next 27. 27? 39. And 29. Okay, so we have veterans over here. How would you say the world is today with regard to the theater? Are there more producers, more people coming in to, to become involved financially in the, in the production of theater? Uh, wh where do you see the pinnacle? What, what do you see? Especially well, since you are involved with this course for the theater. The Commercial producer. Theater Institute, which trains producers for the commercial theater. Especially one of your best alumni. And yeah. Nick was a <laughs> very distinguished graduate of two of our most important courses. Um, I, I think shows get more expensive all the time. It's just the nature of the beast. This is a business full of people, and people need to keep up with inflation. Um, so these shows get more expensive. It requires more capital to produce shows, and that means more people have a chance to get involved. Uh, and there's a real appetite for doing it. Broadway is very glamorous, very exciting, and a, you know, from time to time, you can make a lot of money. Can you make a lot of money in Broadway? You can make a lot of money if you produce the right show. Okay, so he, here's the key. I, do, I don't have my lucky apple over there. Okay, for, for, for me to, 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 to rub it. What is the right show? You know, we were talking prior to, to the filming of the show that you said the, the, the greatest possible profitability is perhaps in a musical uh, because it really, you know, it, it can, it can move endless. on. It's endless. It continues over there. And, you know, look at it this way. You know, you, you have... Uh, Chicago's back over here, Les Mis is back, you know, these are uh, the musicals over there. 
but also musicals have high expenses. I mean, none of you were involved with uh, Spider-Man, where no one will ever see their return of a profit, but we were talking that shows like Kinky Boots brought back the profit in 37 weeks, right? right. And, the, less and the Producers, which less was one that. of your shows, was even less than that. Yeah. So where, where's the best opportunity? Well, in a musical, because a musical, the, there's a greater audience for musicals than for plays, traditionally. And when you hit, you can play a very long time. Phantom is playing 26 years. Wicked is on its 13th year. 11th. Oh, I'm skipping two years. Oh, Lion 11? King Lion King, 16, King is 16, 16 or 17. Year. So you can make a great deal of money if you hit, hit it right. Chicago as a revival is in its 15th year. But you years. did bring out the fact that if you get a name performer in a musical, sometimes if that performer doesn't continue, is a difficulty perhaps replacing that performer. Sometimes that's a problem, but in the shows you just uh, I, I mean, the identified. two of you were very involved with a, a very good show, one of my favorites called The Producers. It's the story and of it, your life. I realize, okay. Uh, and I am Max, but uh, the, the question is, Nathan Lane was important, okay? But he was replaceable, okay? Because I had on my show Richard Kind, who took over right. uh, for him. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's not always that easy. Well, the, the, the actual length of presentation is one of the mysteries of our business. There are shows that come out of uh, opening night and they run, and some run like Phantom for 26 years. You have the Disney Lion King that keeps running. These are shows that are going to be around. They're going to be around way past my lifetime because people want to come and see them. They want to experience Broadway in its richest form, and its richest form is those productions that become successful. And that's what drives people back to New York. They see a show that's a famous uh, production, and then they come back and they want to see something else because they've already seen that. And that's one of the things we're enjoying now is that people are coming from all over the world to see Broadway. Nick? Yeah. Well, on the star front also, you know, with a new musical, you have the opportunity to create stars. So, for instance, when we talk about Wicked, you know, Idina Menzel has become a star in the theater industry for playing an iconic role in Wicked, and now she's going to return after a decade being gone yeah, yeah, I was watching, and having a successful movie film. I was film watching and, an interview with her, and she said, you know, she was there on the bar mitzvah and wedding circuits, okay? Yeah, that, you, you know, I cannot see her over there, but she started, you know, she was one of the torch singers, you know, okay, with a horror and three other, uh, you know, yeah. Songs over there, and many of our musical theater stars have stories like that. Exactly, um, you know, and it's great when they stick by the theater because Broadway is such an embracing community, and its fans are so loyal um, that 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 people can achieve a long-term career in stardom. Yeah. In but let's but let's be uh, careful to bring up one important point, which is the the fastest growing segment of our audience is the foreign audience. Yes. It's doubled in the last 10 years. If you were to ask any of us, to be honest, about what the most important, well, Nick's too young, but if you were to ask, <laughs> what's the most important development in theater in your lifetime? The answer is the jet plane. The jet, because the jet it plane brings and, tourists in and huge numbers okay. to New York. 54 million visitors last year. Right. That's what helps Broadway. That that's, is, that's they what come helps. for Broadway. It, it, they come for Broadway. It, 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 it fills our hotel rooms. It fills the restaurants. They're here for Broadway. People and we're want. still cited as the, the single most important tourist attraction when people really? come to the city. In this city. What do they intend to do? They intend to see a Broadway show. Now, Always tops the So list. here's an interesting thing. One of the biggest uh, attractions today is Ground Zero. Yes. People going to Ground Zero. Do you foresee a time that because, you know, the Brooklyn Academy in Brunswick, Brooklyn is, is, is booming the Barclays Center. Do you see a theater being downtown in uh, lower, uh, you know, uh, in Lower Manhattan? They are trying to put a theater there, but it's not going to be a large commercial theater. I think that Broadway is the heart. Times Square is the heart of the Broadway, and I don't know that you'll see that change mainly because it's not that easy to build new theaters these days. And I also think what you just said is so important. Times Square is also the heart. Crossroads right. of the, the world. Crossroads of the world. As they, they say, you know, if, if you're in the, in the zipper section, okay, in that golden triangle over there of Times Square, that's where it is. And, and 
in reality, the rents are there. You know, if you take a certain radius of the city, you know, even 54th Street where the new hotels are, that's a little bit out of Times Square. No. They don't, they don't consider, pretty close, though. It's close, but it's not considered the heart of Times Square. And the theaters in Times Square, everybody's there. The business is there. I mean, Times Square is, an, is a destination. Absolutely. And, and the it key is. of the destination is, is Broadway. And part, part yes. of going to Broadway, too, is obviously you're coming, you're coming in to see a great new musical or a musical that's been there or a play that you know about. And part of theater going is going to a restaurant and having dinner. Last night, my wife and I were in Sardi's, uh, and the place was filled. And at 10 minutes or 5 minutes to 8, it was empty because everybody's running off to see a different show in a different theater. So that, that's part of what it is. But there are also the, the visitors that Tom has talked about is this is the excitement. They come, Times Square, just going through Times Square on your way to the theater is an adventure. You know, and, it, and you're visiting New York, and you're not here for one day usually. You're here for maybe you're a week. For, so you're going to do lots of things. Look, you're going to go to Ground Zero. I have Zero. friends, uh, you know, from Atlanta, and every year that they come up to New York, they make sure that they have four or five shows. They, right. they've planned this over there. You know, it's more important for them to have the shows than the restaurants. The restaurants are easier for them to pick over there. The show, to get the tickets to that specific show, you know, to bring that grand order to the first show to do this. Now, let's talk about getting the next level of producers, which what the program that you're doing. Well, Commercial Theater Institute trains people to be commercial producers and investors. Uh, you know, it's a complicated business. It's not like most businesses, the theater business, in a lot of ways. So anybody who wants to go into it really needs some kind of an education. But in addition to an education, if you really want to be in it, you need connections. You need to network. And the Commercial Theater Institute provides a platform for networking, for learning, for hearing from people. Virtually everybody here will be volunteering time to talk at Commercial Theater Institute programs. That's important. Now, now the, the, here's the question. You said everyone who wants to get into the theater. <coughs> there, are, there have been a lot of new angels, as we would say, mm. you know, joining the ranks of theater producers. And many of these people are very successful business people from other backgrounds. Do these people who have, let's say, made multi-million dollars, maybe in the hedge fund or something else, are they taking these courses or are they just saying, you know, I'm going to invest. I want to be in Rocky. I want to be in Bullets Over Broadway. I want to be, you know, in Dina Mizell's show. Is, or, or, or are they just, or are they, they're taking their gut? Well, some of each, naturally. Right. But a surprising number of people who are making mid-career changes or adding to what they do in mid-career, if they've been successful, take these courses because it's virtually the only way there is to learn what it is. And most people who've made a lot of money are careful businessmen and women who pay attention before they make an investment. Now, here's the, the interesting thing. Nobody really talks about, you know, what's the success rate? You know, it's like restaurants. You know, people say... It is like restaurants, okay, <laughs> actually. You know, it's, you know, restaurants, and, and it's very interesting. I did a restaurant show two weeks ago. I had Michael Stillman of Maloney and Porcello, okay? And I said, how's the Hurricane Club? He said, the Hurricane Club is no longer a club. Okay, he said, we opened, we're changing the venue and changing the, the place. Fortunately, he's able to do that. The restaurant business, you got a 50% failure. What's the failure rate in, the, in the, the theater business for producers? 70. So it's harder. Yeah, 3 in 10, roughly, succeed. We actually are in the restaurant business. When the show closes... No, he is no, in no, the no. restaurant business. No, no, no. I think it's in reverse. No, no, no but the, the theater is in many ways a lot like the restaurant business. show comes in. It's successful. It runs. People keep coming. Right. It doesn't. Goes out. A new menu comes in, and it's a new yeah. show. It's really it's but, high but, but wait risk, a high reward. But there's right. a different right. thing. Sometimes you can take over that restaurant quickly, you know, because it's already you know the the the, the cabinetry is there. The Never stove works is there. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't work over here in the theater business. You got to put new new production. You need a new show. Gotta, that's right. But that's part of the process. In a funny way, most restaurants do also, though. They usually they change the decor. They keep the location, but they change the decor because it failed for a reason. They you keep know, the kitchen the bad the way food. it is. Now, what, what's interesting, you know, if you talk about that, and, and I've done shows on second, third, and fourth generation businesses survive and grow, there are a few restaurants 
who have done, okay, Patsy's is in their third generation, the Palm is in their third generation, Rayo's is in their fourth generation. You, you have that type of thing in the theater business. You have shows which are having the revival in their second generation, their third generation, right? Or not even. They're just playing to the next generation of people. So if Phantom of the Opera is running 26 years, people are bringing their kids back and their grandchildren back to an experience they had 30, exactly. almost 30 I years mean, ago. Let's, let's look at one of your shows that just came out. I mean, last year that recently closed, Annie. Yep. Okay? You know, it was a show that people wanted. You know, it was something, you know, uh, and look at the shows that you've done over the years as a producer, you know, many of them coming back in revivals or something over there. Yeah. How many shows do we see in the future, uh, the number of revivals versus new productions? I think it's going to be predominantly new productions. Th those are the ones with the chance of really running long, long periods of time and the ones where you have a terrific chance of making money. Um, I, I, I think, let's... Let's, I think one of the things that's true of the theater is there's two very distinct audiences. There's an audience that goes to everything, and they populate the plays, and they're the first ones to see musicals. And then there's an audience, and a very big one, that comes into New York occasionally and sees a show or two. It's very important on their itinerary, but they don't come in and see seven or eight shows. So it takes that second audience some time to learn about what's out there that's hot and exciting. So that keeps these shows that are successful going for long periods of time because they're getting out to bigger and bigger circles of audiences. We also should be careful not to um, make less out of revivals because that's right. a favorite kind of press story that, oh, they're doing revivals. If you haven't seen a show, it is not a revival. It's the first you. time for you. Exactly. It's, it's this potentially legendary piece of art that was created by probably an extraordinary group of people and their work should be seen again mm -hmm. right and if you haven't seen it it's not a revival to you now since i was trying to put the you know the similarity between you and the restaurant business one of the businesses that banks do, uh, do really do not like financing is the restaurant business because it's a very difficult business how do the banking community feel about financing the production of they don't the have theater. a problem. They don't. They don't have a problem. <laughs> they don't. They, they don't have a problem. Very they, they're happy to take our money and keep it in their coffee, right? You know, every, but they don't give it you back. You know what? It's interesting. Yeah, we every, open every, checking every, accounts. Okay. That's about every, it. Every time I, I go to the theater and I look at the credits and I see the name of the bank. Now I know these banks, and I say, "You never lend to these people. No. You don't lend. You're a depository." You're, That's correct. But they are. Or a sponsor, what's been, but, what's yeah. been extraordinary is all of our financing comes from an investment community, which is hopefully uh, ever expanding. And over the last 20 years or so, there's been what we call a booking jam on Broadway, meaning there have been an abundance of shows, um, a good string of producers, and a, a fairly robust amount of financing. And in that period, we've survived two recessions, 9-11 and the Great Recession, and, and in all of that, Broadway has stayed consistent or grown, which is an extraordinary you, you know, you, you bring Exactly. Up, you bring up another interesting point. You know, there's this new act called for the crowdsourcing, uh, which is an item where people can, you know, invest, you know, accredited investors, un unaccredited investors, you know, can invest the dollars in this. Have you seen crowdsourcing? It, it was a program, it's the Jobs Act uh, that came out oh, under yeah. Obama. We're it's regulated. Act. It's too yeah. new really for anybody to be out there crowdsourcing at any level. It, it, it's, it's, there's a lot of regulations that haven't completely unfolded. Um, I, I think it'll be a while before you see Jobs Act related stuff going on. We had one production that did a full SEC registration uh, so they could take very small investors and lots of them, and the guy who produced it, I don't think, would ever do it so again. You know, you asked that it's, question. It's too costly me. to... Yeah, uh, you asked that question about uh, the banking industry uh, a couple of years back in the midst of the crisis. I was invited to a lunch because they're always looking for your business, too, even though they don't give back. They, they like and taking they, deposits. <laughs> There's nothing wrong and with they, deposits. And they asked I know his <laughs> bank. They I know your me, bank. How do, you, how do you explain the fact that the theater has thrived through this enormous economic crisis. And I looked at them and I said, if I could explain that, I'd probably be a banker. 
That was the only, I mean, there, there's, there's a phenomenon there's that's a, difficult to define. There's a nice little bank from California called City National Bank who purposely opened up a couple of locations in your market. Right. Okay? They wanted to be, and they, they publicized, we're involved with the theater, we're involved with the entertainment industry. It didn't say what they do for the industry, and they are a great bank, but, you know, that's not, yours, what we would say, is risk capital. It's a little risky. Certain people can't look at a, 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 you know, it's not a garment that we can put an inventory loan on or a receivable. Correct. Speaking about productions, I've been noticing on, on TV, uh, not on my channels, but on TV, a, a great number of commercials for the shows. That seems to be more and more during maybe the winter time. To get not, more people in? Not necessarily. No? Television advertising has always been a great vehicle for musical theater in particular. Because you people can appreciate in a 10 or a 15 second, they can get a hold of a show. A play is more challenging to advertise on television. But I don't think it's an increase. I think it's always been an important distribution. It's been reinforced by point. the cable industry. A lot of, many productions are always advertising in the cable world. Bring up another interesting point you know television is over there for certain businesses social media has become very important how how important is social media today in the theater business well it's important and it's growing especially as we work to develop younger audiences i just hope they don't tweet during the performance okay but <laughs> <laughs> well yeah we don't want that but you know the interesting thing is social media is really valuable when people feel like they have something compelling to say and the thing that sells tickets more than anything is word of mouth word of mouth and that's been true for a hundred years and what social media does is it allows our audience Twelve and a half million of them every year, when they come into a theater, There's something to be wrong. Able Fifty-four to million visitors. There should be a higher number than twelve and a half million. We're, We're working. We, we agree, agree with, with that. <laughs> <laughs> but the marvelous thing we about word you. of mouth and in, in tweeting and everything is that in the old days, when you had word of mouth, you actually had to look at someone or talk on the telephone to someone. Now, in the electronic age, when you tweet someone, you tweet you could tweet a thousand people, all with the same thing. I had a great time last night at Book of Mormon. Uh, and, and not only that, can you talk about any shows that are not in your theaters? I could. Okay. I'm looking forward. There's <laughs> also there's also technologies now where when you buy a ticket, you can use your social media to invite your friends by telling them you're going to that, uh, Kinky Boots on this. See, I'll talk about Paul's show, um, only because we're co-producing the show in oh, this okay. theater. Um, uh, you can tell your friends that you're actually seeing the show if they want to join you that night and then that helps people sell more tickets yeah. uh, you, to individuals. You will see social media being used much more heavily by the theater business. Everybody is moving into it, the shows, the ticketing, everybody. So, S Since well, you're running the course for the producers and you're also involved with the younger actors, uh, are we seeing more people, more people wanting to get involved with the business of Broadway? Oh, I think there have always been a lot of people, and it grows all the time. Uh, one of my other hats is uh, helping to run a club called 54 Below, and the amount of young entertainment, young composers and lyric writers who come through who are really talented is remarkable. I mean, we have our well-established acts, Patti LuPone and Christine Ebersole and people like that, but we have an enormous number of young people of tremendous talent, many of them like Annalee Ashford, who's in Kinky Boots, uh, making their way on Broadway very nicely, thank you, but many of them poised to get there. It's very encouraging. You know, when you bring up music, uh, there have been, you know, especially, you know, with Jersey Boys, uh, Beautiful, uh, Motown, a lot, of, a lot of people, and you know, we were talking about the Burt Bacharach situation, and I know this personally because I had Lloyd Price on my show. A number of these performers all believe that their their story can be a, a Broadway production. What's your thought about that? Well, everybody's story could be a Broadway production, but you yeah, got to get someone to produce it. Yeah, but you have to ha get someone to produce it, and it has to be interesting enough. Okay? Uh, and some will work and some won't. Um, At the end of the day, so many ideas can work. It's all in the execution, and do you hit it so right at the right so time? So what's the key? I mean, I have 
literally four successful producers, even though your own theater owners also and in other areas. What's, what's, the, what's the, the chemistry? What's the cake mix to make a, pr a successful Broadway production? Well, if we could answer that question, we'd be, we would be so busy. Then, then, then give me, you know, the, the cake mix to make a cupcake as opposed to a full cake. I mean, what makes, what makes a production really good? I'll tell you what I think makes a production really good, a very compelling story and terrific music. That's really what it comes down to. I think the story comes first. A lot of musicals that have wonderful scores You're right. really founder on the telling of the story, um, the and, book, the book, and, the and that's the key. That, that is. But even if you've got a well-told story, you have to have great music. The combination is what makes these long-running hits. And a good when team you're all to done, put it it's together. half luck. Yeah. I was going right? to say that's a lot of it. When we're all Me, done, it's 50% luck because, yeah. you know, we all put together quality teams and sometimes... They just misfire. <laughs> okay, are, are, are we having, you know, are we having the Rodgers and Hammerstein teams? Are we having the... Uh, the the Lieber and Stoller teams. Do we have that today? Is there the next, do you see that next generation? You can't, you can't answer that question until we're into the future. Uh, but today, do you have that next generation? That's why I'm not asking the future. I mean, because you know, when, I, when I run into Mike Stoller at the Friars Club, you know, people say, you're Stoller. I said, that's Stoller, okay? You know, it's, uh, okay. But, but I mean, I think it goes to what Tom said. You have to, you have to come up with a story that you think will reach people and that people will want to play to and then put it all together. There's a lot of people doing it, a lot of stuff that will never happen, but there's a lot of people that have the energy and the excitement and the passion to try to come and put something together, and then you've got to play it out as you develop it. It takes A musical yeah, can take just, three to ten years to put together. Just to reiterate, Tom, you have to have a great story. You, it must be a great story that people are attracted to. And then it has to have great music. And then it has to have great talent. But there's great dramas also. Well, no, and there is too, but, but that's a great story in a play. But it, it is orchestrated in a presentation in what you see and how it reveals what it's about that generates something in that magical thing that an audience sits in a dark room and it works for all the people sitting together. I mean, look at Billy Crystal came back. It's right. a one-man... Yeah. But you know, you better than before. Story. Right. Better than before. But the thing that I back. think is is exciting is that I don't know that there'll be Rodgers and Hammersteins that churn out musical after musical really at a high level. But what we have is really exciting composers and writers coming into the business. So you see a Cindy Lauper, who's you know a legend in in her own way, coming right. in and writing an effective musical, or Tim Minchin, who nobody knew much about in the United States but a big star in Australia coming in and writing Matilda. Uh, the notion that these people are being attracted to theater, that they're excited by the idea of theater, Sting is coming with a musical. That's exciting to me more than whether or not there'll be a Rodgers and Hammerstein. And, and yeah, and I don't think the Rodgers and Hammerstein um, example is, it's less likely that someone will be able to dedicate their entire career you know, Andrew Lloyd Webber, Rodgers and Hammerstein, and, and many of the legends to it. I agree with Tom when people cross mediums, right? So Let It Go, the song from Frozen, is written by Robert yeah. Lopez, Lopez, and, um, Lopez right. you know, who wrote um, Avenue Q, right? right? Bobby wrote Avenue Q and Book of Mormon. Right. So well, it's great to see them succeeding in another medium and then they'll hopefully come back and write another show. Well, Kristen has a show called In Transit that I'm very hopeful will get onto Broadway. Yeah, that, that, Two that's of them the will crux of that issue. Before the end of this season, I want all of you to come back, even you, Mr. Libby, okay? <laughs> He's a talk, regular. Okay, to talk about Broadway. The next uh, 17 weeks are the important weeks over there uh, because of the new shows coming up before the... Uh, the Tonys, I hope everybody has a great season. I'd like to thank Paul, Nick, Bob, and uh, Tom, and I'll see you next week.